Hi, this is Sue from Sue Saunders Photography. And a couple of months ago, I wrote a blog post about using Snapseed on your mobile phone to create professional looking images. And um, I got such a, a good response from that and so many questions as well. I thought that I would go one step further and give you a demo of um, the editing process that I generally use on my mobile phone using the Snapseed app. So this photograph that you see here is one I've edited already and I just want to show you this was the before so you can see it's quite a big difference this was just a shot grabbed in the kitchen while my daughter was blowing bubbles and it's a lovely image but you can see in the background there's loads going on that I wanted to remove so I basically used Snapseed to get this image here and I also did a black and white version there I couldn't decide which I like best so what I'm going to do now is I'm going to show you how I did that and hopefully then you can um, use it on your own images um, have a go at taking out clutter and backdrops so the first thing I'm going to do with this is I'm going to make it a black and white for the sake of this demo it's a lot quicker to um, to edit out a background when it's in black and white so the first thing I do to make a black and white is I give it the image a bit of poke as I say, as I call it, using the drama filter. Um, I'm going to use drama one. I think that's enough. I do that first before I go to the filters again and go to black and white and use the. Mm, let's have a look. That's the neutral and that's the contrast. I usually use a contrast um, black and white because I do like my black and whites quite pokey but I think it's a bit dark so I'm also going to take the brightness up you do this by basically once you've applied that filter you're in black and white you touch the screen um, and 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 move your your finger up and down and then it will bring up this box and then you can increase or decrease as you can see the contrast so I'm gonna go there and I'm just gonna take it down a tiny bit there we go and that's about right and then when you Use to to accept your changes. You tick on the little tick, which is you touch the little tick, which is down there in the right hand corner. We go yes, please. Done. Um. Right. Next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to apply a yet because um I'm gonna it's going to draw the eye in and it's going to get rid of some of that background clutter for me automatically. A vignette is just darkening the edges of your image. So a little blue dot appears, which you can move around. You can see what happens when it moves it around. I'm going to leave it in the middle for this. I'm just going to make sure I've got her face in the light. And you can make it bigger or smaller. I'm just going to go there. And in the top right hand corner here, you've got this little, uh, that little square button. That is your before and after. So that will show you um, what, what it's going to look like if you apply that filter. So you get the chance to look, of, you know, step back and, ha and have a look to see, you know, is that better? Or, or, does, or do you want to discard that? I want to say yes please, so I'd go to the tick again. And that's just darkened the corners already for me. Um, so it's just helping me out really. Now this is the this is the bit that, that um, is new to most people. And we've, we've converted black and whites before, but this is the bit that it gets interesting. So I you go to tools and I use the brush. And down the bottom here you can see you've got dodge and burn, exposure, temperature and saturation. Temperature and saturation um, are to do with colour, really, colour imagery. So we ignore those and we're going to use dodge and burn and exposure. And the first thing I'm going to use is exposure. So I'm going to hit on exposure. And um, this basically means that wherever I touch, you can paint. This is a paintbrush. And wherever you touch with your finger, it acts like a paintbrush. And what it will do is it will either increase or decrease the colours, uh, sorry, the tones in the photograph. So I want to make that background black. So I'm going to dial right down. So you've got that little plus 0.7 there at the bottom in exposure. I'm going to keep going down, down, down using the um, arrow pointing down until I've got minus one. Now that means I'm going to go down and stop. Now if you see it in the top right hand corner here, you'll see me starting to paint with that. You see it's starting to get dark. And I'm going to zoom in to that because I don't. what I don't want to happen is... Um, I don't want to be too heavy handed. So you zoom in and you paint with your fingers where you want to basically.
basically you know, paint out, darken down and paint out that clutter in the background. Um, what will happen is some bits that are already dark will go really dark and brilliant. They're, they're, you know, they've gone already. And some bits, like this cup here, will just, um, you know, the tone is too light and it won't, it won't disappear altogether. So you basically have to repeat this, this step over and over again. I'm going to go to the other side here and I'm going to, oops. to the other side and do the same thing down here. Um, the advantage again of, of zooming in is that you can get uh, much more accurate with it. If you zoom right out you see um, you basically let me show you if, you, if I'm zooming out and I, and I did a, a line like this then I'm, I'm basically I'm, I'm, I'm taking out too much really. And then I, if you do make a mistake like that, that's fine. What you can do is you can erase it. The, ra the way that you erase it is, um, if you hit on the little arrow again, you'll come up, it'll come up with erasure. Eraser, rather, not erasure, weren't they? Band. And then you can, you can bring back whatever you've done. Um, this is really useful because around here, look, you see, you might have been a bit heavy handed. You might have, um, bled into the, there, so I made an error there, look, which I haven't even noticed, and I'm just bringing that back, and her hair here, let's bring that back, just a bit, okay, and tick on that, so as you can see already, the image is looking, you know, a bit better, but you have to repeat, as I said, you, to, to get rid of those, that background completely, you need to repeat that again and again until you it's gone until you've basically darkened it completely down so it's a, it's a patience thing um see so if i go back again i've, I've dialed down to minus um one stop and i'm painting with my finger again you can see this area is getting darker and darker and darker but it's not going to go away super fast there we go um what I will say is as well, there's, there's another tool that you can use, um, the heel brush, and I will show you that just briefly, um, but it's quite temperamental, it's not the best, um, not the best tool, really, and I'll show you why. Um, these areas here, the, the really light areas, you know, you could be going for quite some time to get rid of those completely. So let's pick the healing brush and I'll show you what that can do as well. We go into an area like this very white bright spot that you, spots you've got there and you touch on them using the healing brush. They can disappear altogether. Having said that, which is great, right? But having said that, um, it is quite temperamental. It takes um, information from nearby, from anything nearby the healing brush and it will replicate that so if I've got lots of dark areas brilliant you know it is great because it will just it will take it will look around it the pixel the pixels around and it takes the oh god what have I done now so I need to undo that um take it will take the pictures the pixel sorry take the information from around it and it will um, replicate that which is great if you've got a lot of dark empty space like I have here and you can get rid of some of that detail using the healing brush. And there we go. That's actually worked quite well. Um, you will see using the healing brush it does it does blur quite a lot. Um, especially when you're near edges you might have to you, you need to be wary that it doesn't um, it doesn't end up looking a bit strange. There we go. So it's getting right into the edge there. Okay. So you can see that that looks like way better already. And let's go over to the other side and do some of the same. And you can see there, you see that it didn't work particularly well because it's 
it's replicating light areas as well as dark. Can you see that? So I'm gonna, there's a little, um, your undo arrows. So your arrows down the bottom, one is redo and one is undo. So you can you can click on undo if that, you know, if it hasn't actually worked particularly well and, and try again. So I'm gonna, I think that, you know, I'm not gonna have much success using the healing tool over here. I think I'm going to have to bite the bullet and, and just keep blur, you know, keep, keep on with the exposure. Oh, that's not too bad. It's a bit of suck it and see, you know, at least I can take down those bright spots. If I can get down those bright spots, then I can go in again. Oops. Excuse the cold. I'm sounding quite um, foggy, I know. Okay, the other good thing that the, I've just done it automatically, the other, I'm just going to show you the other thing, the great thing the healing brush is for. This is my daughter looking, um, particularly raggedy in this old cardigan covered in dog hair so you know it's great for taking out little spots like this that 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 would definitely annoy me in the finished picture so I'm going to go in and and take out there's a bit of a stain bad mummy um and then you know here there's this the bobbles on her jumper you know if you don't want those if there's if there's anything in the picture that's a bit distracting is you know, they're great for spots or pimples and cuts on, if you don't want it in, um, it does a really good job of, you know, getting rid of that. Bear in mind that if you're way zoomed out again and you go to hit a spot, you're really going to notice it. You, you're really going to see, a, you know, it will hit a large spot and it will change a large spot. So you need to zoom right in to get rid of something small like that. Otherwise it will be really noticeable. Your changes will be really noticeable. Okay, so you can see now it's really shaping up. It's really looking, you know, um, like my after picture that I showed you. I'm now going to go back to exposure. Now I've sort of had a go with that healing tool and uh, got rid of some of those hot spots. I'm now going to go back and you'll find, you know, then it's much easier, as you see, to, to take out those leftover little bits. And I'm going to show you now uh, the last trick that I would use, and that is I'm I'm dialed right down here on minus um, a stop. What I would do to go into the edges um, is go up a little bit, so that those edges are almost you know a little bit softer, and then go back down and try and try and um, keep experimenting with it, so that you don't have a really uh, Artificial edge is what I'm trying to get at. You know, it will it, it'll be noticeable, particularly like for example around her hair. Okay, is that over here? Crazy hair, like a crazy hair child. Um, I think I can lose that. I don't, I don't, I don't mind losing that bit up there at the top. Um, there. Um, but if I just dial that down a little bit and come in the edges here, I can make that edge that's that edge a lot softer for her hair. If you see what I mean, and here as well, where you can see you've got that edge of that light edge, which is ruining that really. So I'm, what I'm going to do is dial right down to minus one, and then come back up a little bit to minus seven and ease it in. Come back up a little bit. And go down and try and get the edge to look more natural. I might have to go in again there with the um, with the healing brush because that might just not not be quite enough. There you go. So that's the general gist. Let's zoom out. Okay. So I, if I was being uber fussy and I was, um, I would probably play with this a little while longer. But you've got the general gist. You can see how how that can work. Um, only other thing I did with this particular image was then I added uh, a blur, um, which is lens. So I went to filters, lens blur, and I added a, yeah the radial blur. So I I wanted. Her info, her face in focus, 
and but that that front um bubble to be out of focus to give depth of field to give that feeling of depth which you don't really get from a camera phone um you know not, not really you, you do get some but not enough um so putting it in afterwards you can see can make quite a difference it just gives that 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 blur at the at the front of the picture and it gives some depth to it so i just pop one of those in and there we have it that's um the you know the the picture really and you can see just by tapping on it there's your before and there's your after and you can see how how you know transformed it is really from the original image it's a completely different image and you know all in a few minutes really so have a play with it i hope you enjoy it um as much as i do i use snapseed on on sort of 80 percent of my photos i suppose i do use other apps as well and i'll probably be um doing some demos with some of those because i think they, there are other, are other apps worth mentioning and worth having a play with but thanks for listening and i'll see you next time